Amen, amen. Uh, this morning, this morning, I, 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 I want, uh, uh, I want us to speak about a few life issues that have been making me to think seriously for many years uh, as a believer. As a believer, for a long time, I, I, I stayed and I still continue to wonder and to think and to ask questions. Uh, and uh, sometimes I ask questions that I never get answers. Bwana Pewe Sifa. Uh, so don't try to imagine that pastors have answers to every question that can be asked. Even to the questions they ask themselves, they may not have an answer. Because the answer does not belong to them. Bwana Pewe Sifa. You may come to me and I may not have the answer of uh, what you want to know of your problem. But one thing I know is that our God is good. Hallelujah. And he is faithful. And he has told us to, to let him know our needs. To let him know our, our, our grievances, the issues that we have in life. We bring them to him through prayer. Amen. That is the faith we have. That through prayer we speak to God. And because we have faith, we know our God answers. Amen. We may not have the answer. But God has. Praise the Lord. And many times I, I kept asking myself a number of questions because uh, the Bible tells us all was finished. It's not just finishing today. All was finished at the cross at Calvary. Amen? But when we are walking in this journey, we wonder whether all is finished because we find ourselves struggling with a lot of issues. We find ourselves battling every day of our lives. We find ourselves uh, uh, in situations that we even don't know how we are going to take ourselves out of them. Praise the Lord. And uh, let me tell you, it's not a small challenge. We, we are always confronted with the situation, challenges that are very difficult um, uh, even to handle. Eh? We only trust that uh, in one way or the other, God will make a way. Hallelujah. And that is the faith we have, that God will make a way, regardless of situation. And today, I, I, I want to speak about uh, how uh, the spirits, how the habits, how the deeds, how the utterances, yeah? of our ancestors affect our lives. Because they affect our lives. They affect our life and they affect your life. You may feel the way you are and whatever you are going through, you feel sometimes it's a bad luck. But there are, there are no bad lucks actually. Whatever we call bad lucks are not really bad lucks. They are things that are already planned prior, prior to us knowing about them. But because we never expected them, tunasema hilo jambo ni bahati baya. Bwana apewe sifa. Tunaliona likiwa bahati baya, lakini katika maisha hakuna kitu inaitangwa bahati mbaya. Bwana apewe sifa. Unapata ajali unasema bahati mbaya tulipata ajali. Lakini hata hivyo, hiyo ajali haikuwa bahati mbaya. It was planned somewhere, only that you never knew it was. Wewe ambaye hukuwa unajua ndio inasemekana ni bahati mbaya kwako. Hallelujah. Na unajua Biblia inatuambia my people perish for lack of so whenever we don't have knowledge our life we live a very careless life we live a life without a purpose we lie we live a life without direction yeah when 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 we people look at, unto us yeah it is as though we are we are tossed to and fro kwa maana there is something that we are lacking according to Hosea chapter 4 uh, verse 6 lack of knowledge causes people to perish. Amen. And uh, you know, the other time, when I, uh, when I spoke here uh, a few words, I said, uh, most of the time in our life, we have uh, embraced the body of the Lord, and we have forsaken the principles of that Lord. The body and principles must work together. 
For without them working together, then we are people who lack knowledge. Hallelujah. We are blessed the name. We are blessed the body because we, we always talk about the name of Jesus. We know in the name of Jesus we can rebuke demons. We know in the name of Jesus we can speak to sicknesses. But you know there are also principles that govern that. Hallelujah. And those principles is the knowledge that we lack. Those principles is the knowledge that we lack. And when we lack that knowledge, then uh, what will happen is that our life may be very meaning meaningless. We may be toiling every day and coming back with nothing. We may, we may live a life of expectation and never achieving. Hallelujah. Uh, kuna kundi ya watu ina, ina, niliwambia wakati mwingine inasemanga I was just about I was just wakati wote watu wakifanya jambo yule anashindwa hata, hata Trump na wali anasema he was just about you know because they were in a race he was about to, to win wanapewe sifa lakini isama we, he missed Unaenda unanunua Kenya Charity Sweepstick. Roy kitangazwa unaona you missed one digit. Unasema I was just about. Ni kama ukienda pale ununue ingine, you are going to end up that digit that you missed. But you can be certain you will be far away than you were before. Bwana apewe sifa. That just about that that language that tells us we are just about. It is orchestrated by some powers. It is orchestrated by some principles in life. And those are principles that we are ignorant of. And they always impact our life negatively. They always impact our life in a way that leaves us uh, uh, pain, uh, painful. They leave our life uh, aching. They leave us uh, uh, regretting why we ever tried. Hallelujah. It is very pathetic. It is very pathetic. Yeah? We need to embrace knowledge. Psalms 119 verse 1 that uh, the Bible says the unfolding of your word, the unfolding of the word of God brings light. The unfolding of the word, the liberation of that word, the understanding of that word, when the word enters in your heart, when you exercise that word, that word when it enters in your life, it brings light and it gives you understanding. It gives you knowledge. Hallelujah. And that's why we need that knowledge. Because that word that unfolds day by day, it has the principles that we need to make us more than conquerors, to make us overcomers in life. You know, many times I sit and, and ask myself questions, sir. Because Jesus told his disciples, you should not worry what you eat or drink. <clears throat> yeah? Why? Because our Father knows that you have such needs. But have you ever slept hungry? Have you ever slept hungry? Oh, it's only me who, are, who has ever slept without food. Everybody else is always supplied. Unajua shida ya chisi wa kristo ni kwamba we are hypocrites. We never like accepting the truth. When you know you have walked uh, from here to Loisam, not because you wanted to walk, you are not doing exercise, but you didn't have fear. And uh, you still want to to comfort yourself, you are a gentleman. You are not. That is the lack of knowledge that you have. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah? Then you ask yourself, if, if the Bible tells us that God knows that we are, we have that need, and the Bible says he is able to do exceedingly abundantly, about that we ask of or think of, then why am I not receiving even the minimum, leave alone the abundance? Hallelujah. Why? Why is it that I'm not receiving? Why is it that I'm working and not uh, 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 amounting to anything? Why am I struggling? And I, I, never, I never see the, 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 the labor, the fruit of my labor. Why? Yeah? There, are, there are so many things that work against our lives. And that's why the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities and powers in the spiritual realms. Our struggle, our battle. You know, 
when you are struggling, you may feel that you are struggling against other people. You may feel that you are struggling uh, 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 to, to catch up with your age group, to catch up with the, with the people that you are in school with. Maana ukiwangaria unaona wakiwa mbari sana. Unaangaria unaona they are achieving a lot. But your life is as though it's not, it's not amounting to anything. Unafikiria jambo la kufanya. When you are struggling, when you are trying this and that. The Bible says our struggles. Vita vietu. See their mwili na dam. Kwa napewe sifa. We fight against the rulers. Kuna watawala katika ulimwengu wa kiroho. Hallelujah. Kuna watawala ambao hauwaoni na macho. Kuna watawala ambao they are always fighting against your fortunes. They are always fighting against your destiny. They are always against uh, fighting against your family. And no matter how you struggle, you feel as though you are tethered. You are you are you are tied with a sling on the leg. Hawezi ukatoka mahali uko uende mbele. Ama kuna mahali unaweza kwenda ufike and there is a place you cannot go beyond. Hallelujah. Why? Because they are rulers, they are principalities, they are powers, they are authorities in the spiritual realms. Katika ulimwengu wa anga, eh? kuna nguvu zinapigana na wewe. Kuna watawala wanakupinga wewe. Kuna nguvu ambazo zinazuilia hiyo ambayo unaita mbahati yako. Hiyo ambayo likuwe unakushudia kupata. Kuna kile kinaizuilia. Hallelujah. And, uh, and that's why, that's what I want us uh, uh, to look at today, uh, and probably, and probably uh, another Sunday, because it's not likely that we can do everything that we, we should do. Uh, can, we, can we go to the book of Ezekiah, book of Ezekiah, chapter 16, chapter 16 of uh, Ezekiah, from verse 1. From verse 1, we, let's, let's, let's read a, a number of verses. Again, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, call Jerusalem to know our abomination, and say, Thus says the Lord God to Jerusalem, Your birth and your nativity are from the land of Canaan. Your father was an Amorite, and your mother a Hittite. As for your nativity, on the day you were born, your navel cord was not cut, nor were you washed, uh, nor were you washed in water to cleanse you. You were not rubbed with salt, nor wrapped in swaddling clothes. No, I pitied you to do any of these things for you, to have compassion on you, but you were thrown out into the open field. When you yourself were loath on the day you were born. And when I passed by and saw you struggling in your own blood, I said to you in your blood, live. Yes, I said to you in your blood, live. I made you lie like a plant in the field. And you grew mature, matured, and became very beautiful. You, uh, you, are, you are blessed, you are formed, your hair grew, but you are naked and bare. <coughs> when I passed by you again and looked upon you, it did your time was the time of love. So I spread my wing over you and covered your nakedness. Yes, I swore and not to you and entered into a covenant with you and you became mine says the Lord God. Then I washed you in water. Yes, I thoroughly washed all of your blood and I appointed you, uh, I anointed you with oil. I clothed you in a blooded cloth and gave you sandals of badger skin. I clothed you with, uh, with, the, with the linen, with fine linen and covered you with silk. I adorned you with ornament. Put blessedness on your wrist and a chain on your neck. Verse 14. Your fame went out among nations because of your beauty, for it was perfect through my splendor which I had bestowed on you, says the Lord. But you trusted, verse 15, but you trusted in your own beauty. Played the harlot became of your, because of your fame and poured out your harlotly on everyone passing by who would have it. Amen.
That is the word I want us to look into today. And of course, all the words that are written in that portion of the Bible. So, let's look at, at that portion of the Bible. God is speaking to Jerusalem. And you know, Jerusalem is a presentation of, of a nation. Jerusalem as a city is a presentation of a nation. He is talking to that city, and he is telling it, Kwamba kuzari wakwake, ama, ama, netevete. Netevete nini na kiswahiri? A native. Native. Okay, watch and it's me a native man, I'm Jew. Mwenyeji. Uenyeji. Okay, nativity basi itakuwa uenyeji. Although it is not that man, asasa yo ni citizenship to Tanongea. Nativity ni kama wewe mahali umetoka. Mahali ambapo ni pakuzari wakwako. Ya, mungu anaambia, anaambia Jerusalem, wewe kuzari wakwako. Ya, Ama maali umetoka ni kanan. Mama yako, baba yako, alikuwa mwamori. Na mama yako alikuwa muhiti. Wana apewe sifa. And we know Jerusalem very well. <coughs> we know Jerusalem because Jerusalem, uh, as we know it, uh, we wouldn't say that the mother was that, if you think about it. Eh? When you come to imagine how you understand it, eh? you always say Jerusalem is, uh, is the city of God. Jerusalem uh, is always depicted, uh, de de depicted as, a, as, a, as a bride of Christ. You know, when you look at all that, and then it is, it is, God is telling it that uh, its nativity is in Canaan, then you wonder what, what is God talking about. But then, God is speaking a, 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 a very hidden uh, secret that uh, uh, impacts even our lives today. You know, Jerusalem, before it was called Jerusalem, it was called Jebus. It was a city in Canaan called Jebus. When Joshua conquered Canaan, and they conquered many of the cities, he never conquered Jebus. Jebus was still left under the Jebusites, they were ruling it. They had a king. They were doing their own affairs. Although it was a land given to the Jews. But now this was a land that was in its own. And, and it continued like that all the days of the judges. And all the days of Samuel. And all the days of King Saul. Until David became the king of Israel. When, and that's around... Uh, approximately, it is over 300 years, three centuries. So it's over 300 years. Kwamba, Jebus was a city within uh, the land of Canaan, which is already given uh, to the Jews. And already Jews are here. They are governing themselves within the land. And this Jebus is a city which has got a king within the nation, within a nation, within a nation. Hallelujah. It's like saying now, the Kikuyu land, is a, is a land which has got a, a own king within the nation of Kenya. They can govern themselves the way they want. They can make, make their own laws. They can do anything in, the, in that nation. But they are within another nation which has got the rules and order and, and the laws that govern them. That is the way Jeb, Jeb, Jebus was until David became king. That is the one who went there and conquered Jebus. He conquered Jebusites and he called it Jerusalem. It became the city of God after it was conquered by David. Hallelujah. And therefore, God is, is looking at Jerusalem. You know, when he, is speaking to, when he is speaking through Ezekiah, the land of Judah is already conquered by Nebuchadnezzar. Already the royal seed has already been taken uh, to Babylon. They are already captives in that land. And that is when God is speaking to Jerusalem. He is telling Jerusalem why they have become captives. He is telling Jerusalem why they worship other gods, why they bow down to idols. He is telling them, look here, your sin of worshiping God is not just something that is very simple because it is inherent in your nativity. Hallelujah. It is inherent in your roots. Mari. Umetoka. Eh? 
wa kikuyu ataita kiyumo eh? kule kwa mizizi huko ndiko shida iko hawaabudu miungu mingine kwa sababu wamefundishwa hapa hawaabudu miungu mingine kwa sababu when god is speaking about halotly prostitution in the land he is talking about worshiping other gods bwana asifiwe idols na wanawaambia kile ambacho kinawafanya muabudu miungu mingine si kwa sababu ya yale mambo mmesoma huku tu lakini ni kwa sababu ya ukuzari wa kwenu mahali mulitoka ni kwa sababu ya babu zenu babu zenu walikuwa watu aina gani kule mlizaliwa mlikuwa mna mmezoea mambo ya aina gani anawaambia ninyi kwa sababu ya kuwa ninyi ni wakanani na kanani ilikuwa inaabudu miungu Baba yenu na mama yenu alikuwa anaabudu hiyo miungu ndio sababu hayo mambo yanaonekana katika maisha yenu. Haleluya. They were already the people of God. Don't forget. They had already received the commandments through Moses. They had received the ordinances. They were given the way of worship. They knew it only too well. Haleluya. They knew only too well. They had seen the power of God. God delivering them by power from Egypt. They saw God doing miraculous things in, in that country. They saw God parting the Red Sea for them to pass by. They saw God uh, 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 overcoming the Amalekites along the way. They saw God overcoming Sihon and Og uh, 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 in, uh, in the land of Gilead. They saw that, uh, that conquest there. They saw God stopping uh, the river of Jordan, the waters of Jordan, that they should not flow until they are all passed. Hallelujah. They saw, they saw their fathers had seen uh, the walls of Jericho sinking. Hallelujah. They had seen Joshua commanding the sun to stop her, and it stopped her. But all the same, because of their nativity, they were thinking there are some things uh, they could not forsake. Hallelujah. There were some, there were, there were some things uh, that were still manifesting in their lives. Uh. There were some things uh, that were evident uh, in their lives because of their roots. Hallelujah. Mungu anawaambia kwa sababu ya hayo mambo that is actually why you are in you are now in, in captivity. <coughs> kwa maana mmeendeleza tabia za baba zenu, mmeendeleza tabia za mama zenu, mmeendeleza yale mambo ababu zenu walikuwa wanafanya. Every imagine like this. How many generations were there? From that time, when, let's say, Abraham was called by God, and he was told, come out of your people, leave your people, and go to the land that I'll show you, and I'll make you a great nation. You will become a father of nations. You can imagine how many generations there are. There are very many. There are very many until this time when there are, I, 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 I think the Bible says, uh, there are, I, I think, 14 generations from, from uh, Abraham to the carrying away. Yeah? There were very many gen generations. Uh, and even then, they uh, were still uh, in them. The tabia ya baba zao, tabia za miungu ambayo Ibrahimu alikuwa anachonga kule. Miungu ambayo Ibrahimu alikuwa anaabudu kule, 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 alitoka kule, kule, uh, ulo of Korea. Eh? Wao walikuwa nazo. Wana apewe sifa. Wao waliendele, wali, wali, walianza kujidhirisha katika maisha yao maneno maongeo ya, 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 ya na tabia za ile nchi ambao baba zao walitoka walionekana wakiwa nazo ajiulize what was impacting the life of these people that was bringing back yeah the motions the worship the patterns of worship uh, the habits of the people of Canaan who were already extinguished. They were not there. They were killed under, uh, uh, under Joshua and others under David. Yeah? What was making them to do that? Mungu anasema ni kwa sababu ya kule ulitoka. Kwa sababu ya babu zetu, zenu. Hiyo tabia za babu zenu ndizo bandu mnaendelea kudhirisha. Hallelujah. It is the reason for their behavior. In other words, our behavior uh, uh, predicate on the on the on, on, on our on our on our ancestors on on our where ancestry where we came from yeah unaona verse verse 4 uh, verse 4 anas, anasema your verse 4 on the day you were born your navel cord was not cut 
you are never called was not mtoto anapozaliwa ama mtoto akiwa kwa tumbo ya mama yake anaunganishwa na mama yake na kitu kinaitwa umbiliko cord kwa hiyo umbiliko cord ndio mtoto anatumia kukula anatoa chakula kwa mama chakula inakuja kwa mtoto kupitia kwa hii lakini wakati mtoto amekomaa na miezi tisa imemalizika na mtoto akazaliwa mtoto akizaliwa anatokanga akiwa bando ameunganishwa na kile and therefore this cord must be cut bwana asifiwe to separate the mother and the child the cord must be cut and when it is cut inafungwa na inaoshwa eh Mungu anasema eh, you are not cleansed with water. Ni lazima mtoto akizaliwa aoshwe. In, uh, in some cultures uh, probably it is so even here wale ambao wanafanyanga hiyo kazi wanaweza kutueleza ni lazima aoshwe na tumaji tulio warm not just any, any water. Aoshwe na tumaji tulio warm na tumewekwa chumvi kidogo because the salt hardens the skin of the bed, of the newborn it hardens the skin so that this uh, this baby is able to confront the challenges of the open air mahali amekuja bwana apewe sifa and therefore mungu anamwambia wewe wakati ulizaliwa haukukatwa kitovu haleluya uliendelea kukaa katika umeunganishwa na kule ulitoka umeunganishwa bando na mama yako unakunywa kutoka kwa mama yako unajua mambo ya mama yako umelearn tabia za mama yako kwa maana mmeunganishwa with the code haleluya na hapo ndipo shida zinakuwa nyingi sana because we never like to be disconnected with our ancestors we never want to be disconnected with the world that we came from we never want to be disconnected with the ways that we used to live praise the lord umesikia hawa kabila wanaji, wanasema wao ni wakikuyu wa kristu umewasikia wao ni wakikuyu wa Kristo ama wao ni wakristo wa kikuyu which is which wao ni wakristo wa kikuyu kwani hakuna wakikuyu hapa na njoji yako pale wanasema wao ni wa wakristo wa kikuyu bwana apewe sifa wakristo wa meru wakristo wa meru wakristo wa wakristo wa kamba in other word people want to be attached to their cultures yeah and then they also want to be attached to the culture of Christ praise the lord hiyo ni pepo iliyo kubwa kuliko mapepo yale mengine haleluya hiyo ni pepo iliyo kubwa kuliko ile pepo nyingi Unajua what they do is that wanarudi back to their cultures they, they have come into the church they have they have tasted the goodness of the lord they have tasted the power of god working in the church they have received the holy spirit and then they go back to their culture watoe kile ameta gaburi ya muhiriga so that they may become wa kristo ambao ni wa kikuyu eh huyo ni yule mnyama aliye na pembe kumi. hakuna kitu kama hiyo wapendwa Bwana asifiwe. And let me tell you, if you go there and give that goat, Jesus avails nothing for you. Hata uonge uwe unaomba na ndimi ama uwe wewe unafukuza mapepo, Jesus avails nothing. Praise the Lord. You are either be in this kingdom or in the other. Uwe muyunani ama muyahudi. Hauwezi kuwa muyunani muyahudi. Haleluya. Hiyo ndiyo ile shida tuko nayo ile kubwa sana that watu wanataka kuendelea kuunganishwa na ile umbele kokod kule walitoka huo eh, what do you call it? Usikatwe waendelee kukunywa maji ya ukikuyu ama ya ukamba ama ya wameru na wajaluo waendelee kunywa huko na bando wapata ingine huku ambayo inakunywa yani wana milija mbili. Mulija uko kwa nyungu ya Yesu mlija uko kwa nyungu ya kabila lao wanavuta zote mbili it is going to choke you it is going to choke you wanapewe sifa it is very interesting maana we come to Christ 
and we never want to change. We never want to be transformed. We never want to embrace fully Christ and live for him alone. We want to continue supporting them in whatever they are doing. Yeah? We want to continue supporting them in whatever they are doing. My friend, when we do that, Christ availed nothing to us. Yesu, atuna chochote kwake. Praise the Lord. Mtoto lazima akatwe. Kama ataweza kuendelea kula na mdomo wake, lazima kitovu kifanya nini? Kama atakunywa na mdomo wake, lazima kitovu kifanywa nini? Kama atapumua na matua yake, lazima kitovu kifanywa nini? Yo akawezi kuendelea kukula kupitia kwa kitovu na atumia organs zile amepewa. Ah uh ah. -uh. It cannot work. It must be cut. This connection must appear. Hallelujah. Yes, Mungu anawaambia ninyi hamukuwa disconnected. You are still connected. Na hiyo ndiyo sababu mnatenda mambo ya wakanani. Hiyo ndiyo sababu mko na tabia za wakanani. Hiyo ndiyo sababu mko na tabia za washeria. Kule baba yenu Abrahamu alitoka, ile miungu alikuwa and you know they began manifesting that immediately uh, when uh, when they were at Mount Sinai. When they were at Mount Sinai and Moses went up the mountain and he stayed there for 40 days. They told Aaron look here. Huyo Musa tujui alienda wapi? Tutengenezee miungu mingine. Tutengenezee miungu mingi. Yaani they manifested their tabia immediately. Yeah? The culture from what which they were they were they were used to. The culture that they knew before. Hiyo ndio walikuwa wanataka kuendelea na uh, kuendelea kuishi ndani yake na kutenda mambo yake. Eh? Let me tell you friends. When God is telling them wewe Yerusalemu haukukatwa kitovu ni kusema vile ulikuwa muyebusi ndivyo ulikuja tu ukiwa namna hiyo ni jina tu ulipatiwa ukabatishwa haleluya jina tu ndiye alibatishwa akaitwa Yerusalemu lakini tabia zake hali yake maongeo yake yote ni ya wayebusi haleluya umeona watu wameokoka na ukiwangalia unashangaa kama wameokoka kama ni yale masengenyu walikuwa nayo bandu wanashengenya tu. Ile uongo walikuwa nayo bandu wanauongea wana tu. Yale kule walikuwa wanatembea bandu walikuwa wanatembea tu. Wale marafiki walikuwa nao kabla waokoke bandu ni marafiki wao tu. Wanatembea na wao. Huyo ni mtu ambaye hajabandilika. He the, there has not been a disconnection. The umbilical cord has not been cut. Yeye ni yule mtu wa kare. Haleluya. Praise the Lord. Mungu anatuambia lazima tubandilike. Lazima, lazima, lazima tuwe disconnected na kule ambako tulikuwa. Yeye anaendelea kuambia Lukia, wakati ulizaliwa wewe hakuna mtu alikuhurumia. You are cast out in the field. You know, in the in the in the in the, in the eastern culture, wakati mtoto alikuwa hapendeki ama hatakikani, alikuwa anatupwa outside in the open field kama kuna mtu atamkuta huko amhurumia achukue aende na yeye that is actually what the, what god is telling in jerusalem kwamba wakati ulizaliwa au kukatwa kitovu uliachwa ukigaga kwa damu yako na au kuoshwa na you are despised and cast out in the open field and that that's that's the way they were nobody cared for them nobody cared wao waliachwa tu and then anasema I passed by that time. I saw you wiggling, waggling in your blood. <coughs> and I said, live. Hallelujah. Wakati tulikuja kwa Yesu, that is what we were declared, what he was declared unto us. Wakati tulikuja, ukasema nataa kuokoka, the word live was declared upon you. Hallelujah. But then, what about, what, what then after there? Eh? And I said, live. Yeah. Akamchukua akamwosha. Eh? That's what the Bible says. Yes, I said to you, live. That is verse 6. I made you dry like a plant. Nilikufanya uka ukanawili kama mea and you grew mat and matured and became very beautiful. Yaani alimlea and akamnacha mpaka akawa mlembo, akamachua. Hallelujah. That is what God did when you came to Jesus without form. You are told live. And by the grace of God, God bestowed you with his gifts. And you began to shine. Wakati ulikuwa umepalala, ukaanza kushine. Ulikuwa unaonekana kama hauna mbele wala nyuma. Ukaanza kuona ukiwa na mwelekeo. Ya? 
And the Bible says ukaanza kuonekana ukiwa maridadi ukaanza kuona ukiwa kuonekana ukiwa ukiwa mlembo and what happened what happened then yeah and he said when i passed by you uh, and looked upon you indeed your time was uh, was time of love so i spread my wing over you and covered you with nakedness yes i saw all and all to you and entered into a covenant with you and you became mine says the lord Mungu anasema nikapitia Yerusalemu tena nikapitia hiyo nchi ya Yuda tena nikapitia hiyo nchi ya Israeli tena baada ya ku, ya, ya, ya kumuosha baada ya kumwambia Aishi baada ya kumpa karama baada yeye na, na, na baada ya kumpa chakula kizuri na akawa mlembo akaendelea kumachua Mungu anasema I passed there again and I saw you are mature the time for marriage Yeah the time for marriage you are ready to be married and then i spread my wing i spread my cloth upon you in other word that is to say god engaged her bana pewe sifa and he made a note alimwengage na aka akampatia nadhiri yake hallelujah alimpa nadhiri yeah that's what god did he engaged And the Bible says sisi ambao tumeokoka we are engaged we are betrothed to Christ Does your Bible tell you that Hey Maskin dizo tunazuilia muongee Si afadhali utoe ushikwe tu Kama sauti haitoi kiki kwa sababu ya mask Nauliza Are you one of those that are engaged And you know who are expected to be engaged. The other side I was speaking to some people. I told them the people who are supposed to be engaged they are virgins. Not any girl. Bana pewe sifa. Ba a virgin. That is the only somebody who is expected to ma- to be married. To be brought to church according to the Bible. A virgin. Wale wengine ambao walipeana the virginity huko they became just women <laughs> they may not be married but they are women bana apewe sifa they may not be married you young people ambao mko hapa usikia namna hiyo hallelujah you may not be married but you are now, now are not just a virgin you are not no longer a virgin you are a woman and you know i told you the other day uh, the virgins that were never accepted as the queen what happened What happened? Oh, mrisau. They became spiritual concubines. Bana apewe sifa. Eh? They have no husband and they cannot be married again. They are spiritual. Tujiadhari tusiwe spiritual concubine. Eh? Hallelujah. Bana apewe sifa. So, Mungu akapita pale. He betrothed this woman to herself to himself he against her he wanted to marry her alikuwa anataka awe wake akamvika mavazi mazuri hallelujah alimvika mavazi mazuri akamuosha tena vizuri akamvika mavazi akamwanonki na oil akam akamweka akam viatu na pia akamvaliza a fine linen a fine linen is the garment of priesthood A fine linen is the garment of priesthood. Is the symbol of a priesthood. Eh? Ni kwamba huyu sasa si mtu wa kawaida. He was a priest. She was. She was not an ordinary person again. Akawekwa ornament. Una ukikumbuka eh, huyu mtumishi, mtumo mtumishi ama mtumo wa Ibrahimu alipoenda uh, kutafutia Isaac mke, akaona Rebecca na akashuhudia kwamba huyu ndiye msichana. Biblia inasema he gave her some jewels. Amen. Alimweka sam alimweka jewels, alimvalisha jewels. Hmm? Vitu vya dhamana, akamweka mikufu kwa singo na mikono. Hallelujah na akawa na akawa ni wake that's what he did that what god did but the bible says huyu msichana hata kama amechumbiwa na mungu hata kama mungu amemwambia yeye ni wake yeye kwa sababu ya urembo wake 
ule mbo ule ambao ulivutia wa Kanaan tabia za ukanani zikaanza kuonekana ndani yake akaanza kuwa na ile tabia ya umalaya na akaanza kuzipeana kwa kila mtu ambaye atapitia pale haleluya alianza kuzipatiana kujipeana kwa kila mtu eh alikuwa virgin she is no longer a virgin praise the lord she is no longer a virgin alikuwa engaged akasahau the engagement akajipeana kwa yeyote ambaye anamtaka she became a prostitute and that is why the bible god is telling them that is why you people are in captivity hallelujah you know brethren we may be born again or we are born again we may be in the kingdom of god but do you realize that when if you take stock of your life uta uta utakubaliana na mimi most of the time unakaa kama mtumwa hata kama uko katika ufalme wa Mungu maana u, yale mambo yameyaidiwa katika ufalme you cannot show any of them you cannot show any of them you cannot say you are enjoying whatever in, in this kingdom this is this kingdom is a kingdom of abundance and we don't have abundance hallelujah we are still struggling we are still crying yeah we we are still in need but we are still the children of a king and we are still priests and kings to our god hallelujah why there is a problem kuna mahali kuna shida bana apewe sifa kuna mahali kuna shida na wakati kuna hiyo shida inatuzuilia kuendelea ukiangalia the whole verse the whole chapter uh, of uh, that that chap- chapter 16 up to verse 63 utaona Mungu anazungumzia yale mambo ambao yamefanya hawa watu eh, wakae wa, 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 wawe na tabia za wakanani eh? the bible says exodus 34 that's verse 7 god says he is a jealous god hallelujah he is a jealous god Can we have that, that verse there? That the four verse 7. He is a jealous God, visiting the sins, the iniquities of the fathers or the ancestors to the third and the fourth generation. Yeye ni Mungu aliye na wivu. Yeah? Hata kama atasamee, hata kama uh, atahurumia watu, atazikumbuka, eh? zile yale matendo ya babu zao yale matendo ya babu zetu zile dhambi za baba zetu zitaonekana ama zitadhirika hata kita, kizazi cha tatu na cha nne kitaonekana kikiwa na hawa yale matendo keeping mercy of thousands forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sin by no means clearing uh, iniquity uh, uh, clearing the guilty uh, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children and the children children to the third and the fourth generation visiting eh? visiting the iniquities iniquities in nini eh atini zambi uovu uovu mwadhuku bana apewe sifa mwadhuku kwa kikuyu eh waganu kwa kikamba eh eh mwadhuku kwa kijaruo omondi kwa kijaruo ni nini hiyo? Eh? Ndo? Dola. Eh, we. <coughs> Labda utaniambia tukimaliza. Yaani na other words Morungu akarika na modhoku ya baba ba. o kinyalo sia rolo akatatu ona roa kana eh bana apewe sifa yani yale mambo baba zetu walitenda ule uovu wa baba zetu 
kwa sababu sisi hatuja disconnectiwa na wao hatuja kubali kuwa disconnected na wao Mungu atakumbuka ama ataleta kumbukumbu ya maovu yao juu ya waza, watoto wao na hata watoto wa watoto wao hadi kizazi cha tatu na cha nne haleluya Bwana apewe sifa ndio labda utaona mtu amezaa mtoto E, na huyu mtoto e, ukiangalia ndugu zake na dada zake hakuja kuwa na mlevi yeye amezaa mtoto akawa mlevi anaanza kushangaa huyu anakuwa mlevi akifanana na nani <laughs> bwana apewe sifa lakini tukirudi nyuma turudi nyuma kule uzao ulio maybe third for uh, second first generation pale tutakuta kulikuwa na walevi haleluya kulikuwa na wao na yale mambo walikuwa wanafanya ndio sasa yanaanza kudhihirika katika hiki kizazi. Haleluya. Eh? Yep. Let's let's illustrate it by by this life of this man called Abraham. You know, God called Abraham. Na akamwambia atoke kwa nchi yao, aende kule ambayo kwa ile nchi atamuonyesha. Na Biblia inasema Abraham alitoka na akaenda akafika mpaka Kanani lakini chapter 12 <coughs> chapter 12 inatuambia alipoenda Kanani kulikuwa na njaa na akateremka akaenda Misri haleluya Abraham akateremka akaenda wapi alipoingia Misri wakati anaingia akaambia mkewe angalia mke wangu wewe Sara wa najua wewe ni mrembo sana na watu watakuoangalia na wataona urembo wako na kwa sababu ya urembo wako wataniua we mimi wewe uachwe wachukue wewe uwe mke wao kwa hivyo tukifika kule we sema ni dada yangu haleluya we sema ni dada ya na wakafika kule na ikawa namna ile akaulizwa na ikasemekana ni dada yake alichukuliwa mara moja akapelekwa kwa farao sijui kama farao ndiye alikuwa mwenye wa, wanawake wote wale walikuwa warembo anyway alipelekwa huko mara moja na biblia inasema Mungu tu ndiye alimulinda. Asipelekwa kwa kitanda ya farao. Ngawaje alikuwa kwa Paris, kwa Paris. Aku, aku kwa kitanda. Mungu alimulinda pale. Kwa sababu ya Ibrahim, Bwana asifiwe. <coughs> okay, walitoka pale. I, I don't want to go very far with that story. Maana we don't have time. Lakini walitoka pale na wakarudi kana tena. Biblia inasema uh, katika mlango wa ishirini kukaingia jaa wana apewe sifa kumeingia jaa nyingine sasa hawakwenda mishi walienda Filistine kwa mfalme anaitwa Abimeleki walipofika kwa Abimeleki akamwambia tena sikia ili niishi mimi eh wewe waambie ni dada yangu akawaambia wakaingia na akaambiwa hivyo na Abimeleki alimchukua mara moja akapelekwa kwake lakini Biblia inasema wanaume wote ujue dhambi ya Ibrahimu ilileta shida nyingi sana. Biblia inasema wanaume wote huwa wakati alichukuliwa akaenda kwa Abimeleki, hakuna yule angelala na mke wake. Bwana apewe sifa. Hakuna yule angelala na mke wake Mungu aliwafunga wote, wamekaa hivyo. Kwa maana wamechukua mwanamke wa kuani wake until the day she was returned. Haya, walitoka kule. Biblia inasema mlango wa 26 Genesis kwamba wakati ule wote Isaac alikuwa hajazaliwa hear me Isaac alikuwa hajazali hajazaliwa Isaac amezaliwa baadaye amekuwa mtu mkubwa ameoa Rebeka na unajua wakati alioa alioa akiwa na 40 years Isaac alioa alioa akiwa na 40 years So ameoa na wakakaka na mkewe alafu Biblia inasema kukaingia nja nyingine kama ile ilikuwa wakati wa baba ya akatoka pale akaenda wapi kwa Abimeleki yule yule mfalme kule Philistine akaambia Rebeka Lukia unajua mahali ulitoka ndiyo mahali mama yangu alitoka na ile ni mboma ya wanawake warembo kwa hivyo tukifika kule we sema we ni dada yangu Praise the Lord. Sema wewe ni nani? So wakaulizwa akasema yeye ni dada yangu. Lakini Abimeleki alikuwa na hekima this time. Haku hakutaka kuambiwa habari ya huyo mwanamke maana alikumbuka kulikuwa na mwingine anaitwa nani? Sala. Na anakumbuka ile ya Sala walipa. So haku anataka kuingia katika huo mtego. 
hata kama ameambiwa ni dada yangu alikuwa anataka achunguze so alikuwa anakaa akiangalia kwa umbali anachunguza kwa umbali na siku moja akaona akaona lebe, nani Isaac akikisi mke wake kaona amemchukua kama wangi akamkisi ai ameleki akamuita akamuuliza wewe hiyo tabia nimeona ukiwa nayo si ya mtu na dada yake inaonekana ulitudanganya bwana apewe sifa what am i trying to to, to, to portray here kwamba Isaac hakuwa amezaliwa wakati Ibrahim baba yake aliongea uongo right yeye yeah, amezaliwa baadaye akakuwa mtu mkubwa over 40 years now ameoa na yeye yeah, ameenda pale pale katika ile nchi amefuata nyaya za baba yake ameongea maneno ya baba yake aliyatoa wapi alitoa maneno ya baba yake wapi hmm? and you know the deception and the lie that uh, began with Abraham continued with Isaac Isaac is the second generation right kutoka kwa Ibrahim this is the second generation ukaendelea kwa Jakubu Jakubu akiwa na mama yake Rebeka wamepanga njama ya kumdanganya baba yake ule uongo unaendelea bwana apewe sifa haya ukatoka pale hiyo ni third generation umeenda katika third generation watoto wa Jakubu watoto wa nani wame wakiwa kule malishoni Jakubu ametuma Uh, yule mtoto mdogo uh, Yusufu aende akawangalie wakachukua wakauza alafu akapaka ndamu nguo yake wakamletea baba yao wakamwambia angalia kama hii nguo ni ya mwana yako uone kama ni mnyama alimkula uongo ule ule unaendele the, the, i, 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 Abraham established a, 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 a stronghold of deception lies and it continued to pursue the family na is he is chain ilivunjwa wakati Jacob ari ngangana na Mungu usiku mzima that is when that was broken wakati alibandilishwa njina ndio hiyo chain ikavunjika haleluya you realize now why we always live the life of ancestors we think we are living our own life but we are living the life of ancestors haleluya you realize unangangana bila baba yako alikuwa anangangana we Angalia maisha yako. Ama uwe ni babu yako. Na ama ni watu walio huko nyuma. Vile wana, walikuwa wanangangana na maisha. Hivyo hivyo ndivyo wewe unangangana. Haleluya. Kwa nini? Kwa maana kitovu hakijakatwa. There are powers there that don't want to detach themselves from this family lineage. Kuna maro ya, ya, ya jamii ya kijamii. Na ni lazima kila wakati unakuta ile jamii inatoka ngo wasichana wa malaya ile jamii ina wanaume walevi sana ile jamii ina watu wazembe sana haleluya it is because their powers there are some principalities that are, that actually perpetuate these curses these habits upon the family line mpaka kupatikane mtu ambaye atasimama aseme no enough is enough haleluya mpaka kupatikane mtu ambaye atasema haiwezekani kuendelea tena maisha ya aina hii that is when it can come to an end paka kupatikana na mtu ambaye ata, ata minyana na Mungu kama vile huyu <coughs> mtu ambaye anaitwa Jakubu alimenyana na Mungu usiku mzima mpaka akabandilishwa jina akaitwa Israeli haleluya but you realize also kwamba hiyo haikuwa mwisho maana hata walipoenda na jamii ikaendelea na hao watu wamenawili angalia wamenawili wame wamefichwa misli wakanawili wakaendelea kuwa wengi waka taifa watu wa wengi wa, watu walio na nguvu watu wanaweza kumiliki lakini ukiangalia unaona tabia zile za kwanza za Abraham yeye yeah, alikuwa yeah, mchonga miungu ya ya yeah, sanamu kule ambapo alikuwa anatoka walikuwa wanaaburu miungu mingine lakini walipotolewa misli jambo la kwanza la kudhihirika ni kwamba waliabudu na wakainamia miungu mingine haleluya walifanya hivyo why because their powers that orchestrate the, the 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 habits yeah of family various family lines mambo eh cultural lines along cultural lines kuna yale kama sasa ukiangalia hata uangalie kama makabila kabila zinajulikana kwa mambo mbalimbali haleluya 
Ukienda Meru utasikia wanaambiwa wana, wanajulikana kwa sababu wanakasirika sana na wanaweza kuua. Ukienda wakamba utakuta wao wanajulikana sababu wanapenda uchawi sana. Na wasichana wanapenda hiyo tabia nyingine sana. Ukienda uko wa kikuyu wanajulikana sababu wanapenda pesa kuliko mioyo yao. Na kwa jaru wanapenda samaki sana. Kwa jaru wanapenda kuheshimiwa sana. <laughs> Kila kabila utakuta iko na tabia za na kuna miungu ambayo inaendeleza zile tabi hata akiokoka unakuta bila ile tabia bando inaoneka kwa sababu kuna nguvu ambazo zinavuta mtu kule alitoka unataka kwenda unavutwa kule mpaka ukate kitovu haleluya na kitovu kukita, kukikata si rahisi sana bwana apewe sifa Najua anaangalia saa zangu naona zinaisha lakini let me tell you uh, this one i have so many illustrations i would have told you but let me tell you one uh, one one personal encounter i've told you um, uh, when i was beginning uh, I, i said i have been asking myself questions and struggling with things praying <coughs> every now and then na nyakati zile ambazo nimewahi kuomba concerning wanting to know what how uh, my, about my destiny about the future about what god has destined for me whatever happens is that ni vita ninaonanga imeinuka kubwa sana naona maroho yameinuka yanapigana na mimi yanaleta shida nyingi sana and one day as i was as, as, as i was praying against that i was taken to heaven and i was taken to the court in heaven court room in and then in this court eh uh, mimi ni mstakiwa in the court the bible says there is an accuser of brethren isn't it mimi ndio mstakiwa in that court na yule ambaye ambaye amestaki akasimama kuongea akasema lukia this man cannot be released kwa nini kwa maana kesi yake zimeunganishwa na babu zao kesi yake imeshikanishwa na kesi za babu za zake kwa hivyo hawezi kuachiliwa maana kumwachilia ni kusema hata babu zao waachili Biblia inasema in Lamentation chapter 5 verse 7 our father sinned right our father did what na sisi ndiyo tunalipishwa madeni ya in other words they incurred debts na zile debts ambazo waliinkaa na wakafa wao bila kuziripa sisi ndiyo tunalipiza tunalipizangwa bana apewe sifa And so siwezi kuachiliwa maana kuna madeni ambayo ninatakikana nilipe mpaka nilipe madeni na madeni haya hayawezi akalipwa as long as I'm alive I was very annoyed nikashtuka nikashindwa how can I not be released how can I not be free eh? why should I be answering for my father or my grandfather for that case yeah or for my great grandfather why should I it was it was very annoying and discouraging yeah i stood up and shouted <laughs> of course the mere way ni vile akuku ana sword around vile akuku ana sword i think i would have cut somebody why 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 should i be accused for others and then when i stood up and shouted I saw my advocate stand up. I can tap, I can yambia tulia, sit down. Then I sat down wondering, what will the case what will come out of this case? And and my advocate was giving the reasons why the case should be dismissed. Bwana apewe sifa. Thank God we have an advocate. Praise the Lord. We have an advocate. But you know, even when we have an advocate, we should give a reason for our cases to be dismissed if we are still connected our cases cannot be dismissed praise the lord if we are still connected our cases cannot be have you ever asked yourself why did pharaoh 
Why was Palau telling, telling the children, uh, Moses, uh, Nini and then Mukabudu, your Mungu Mnataku Abudu, Lakini Yacheni Watotoen Wapa? Eh? Leave your children and your wives here. Nini Mwe? Mwende Mukabudu. Kwa maana mwanaume ya kiachirua uko, he has the seed, but he has no egg. Kwa hivyo hakuna generation itaendelea. Hamefika mwi? And then you unashikia na muambia ule wakati mwingine, and then you nini mnata kwenda, but leave your flock, leave your heart behind. You anawagia njuu ya kazi ya mikono ya? Yeye anaitaji, setani anataka kazi ya mikono yako, ikae kwake. Watoto wake, wakae kwake. Hallelujah. Eh? Kitovu kisikatwe. Na ndiyo sababu, alituingiza religion, ambayo inasema, ukileta mtoto kudedicate, mlete tu vile alivyo. But do you realize what Anna did? What did Anna do? When she went to dedicate Samuel? Alichukua ndama ndama wangombe. Did she? Bwana asifiwe. Unajua mnakataa sababu mkona watoto na wamu kudedicate na mnahio? Jua sababu mnakataa. Lakini unajua kukataa si kusema si biblia? <laughs> si kusema si biblia ni biblia Hallelujah Alichukua ndama Akachukua mikate Akachukua mazao ya shamba Akayaleta Akaleta pamoja na mtoto kwa eri Akamuambia uyu ndiyo ule mtoto Ambaye niliomba mungu Nimeleta Nimemleta katika nyumba ya mungu I have come to dedicate him to God Wana wapewe sifa Iyo inatoa watoto wetu kule Inakata kitovu kile ambacho tuliacha wapi Huko, watoto wetu anatole wakule. Yeah? And then we dedicate them to that altar. Eh? We bring them to that altar. That is dedicated with the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, because Jesus paid a price for us. Uh, we have been, you know, there are three words. Redeemed, deliver, and ransom. Which one comes before the other? Which one would come before the other? Redeem, deliver, and ransom. <coughs> redeem. Kwanza ni lazima kitu kiwe redeemed. Na kina redeemiwa through paying of the ransom. Bwana apewe sifa. Ukite kwa nyala na wezi ama na watu. Wale watu ambao wamekuteka nyala wana kuitishanga namba ya simu ya watu wenu. Wana pigiwa simu wana ambiwa tunamtu wenu. Na sikama mnata mtu wenu tunataka shilingi mbilioni moja. You want your ransom. You want to ransom your person. You pay one million or one billion, you get your person. One apewe sifa. That is what Jesus did. His blood is our ransom. He repaid it. He paid for us. And then we were redeemed. You know, it is likely. Mtu kuwa redeemed. Na kuachwa kule alikuwa. Kuwa redeemed does not mean to be transferred or translated. Hallelujah. One time, one time uh, when I was preaching in Meru Church, God gave me a vision of a very big hall that was like a go down, very long. And in this hall, there were benches. There were benches uh, that were very long from the other end to, uh, to the other end. Na kulikuwa na watu ambao wamefungwa, walikuwa wamefungwa kiangaliana, moja pandi mwingine pandi ile mwingine. Wote walikuwa naangaliana. And then when I reached the door there, nikaangalia. Nikaona the way those people are struggling. Nikaona the way they were toiling. Na wote wamefungwa wawezi kutoka pale. Nikaamua kwa kuafungua. I began unloosing them. Naenda na fungua minyolole wa mguu. Nikifungua mtu na muambia toroka. Naenda kwa mwingine na mfungua. Naenda kwa mwingine na mfungua. Nikatoka mwisho ule, nikafika mwisho. Wakati nilifika mwisho, nikasimama, nikageuka. Nilikuta wale watu ambao nilifungua. Bando maali niliwafungua. Na nikawambia waondoke, wakimbie, hawa kuondoka. Nae mwenye kuwafunga, alinifuata. Nimamuona akiingia kwa mlango. Wakati nimemaliza hiyo laini, nikienda kwa hile ingine. Anaanza tena, anakuja kiwafunga. You know that is you and me. We were ransomed. We were redeemed. Bana apewe sifa. But you realize we were still left in the world where we were redeemed. We were left in the same world. That's why the Bible says, though we are in the world, we are not of this. Here, we are in the world, but not of this world. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And therefore, it is for you 
to know how you are going to live in that world which you do not belong. Ili usifungwe ule mnyolote. As you await your total or your eventual deliverance. Kwa napewe sifa. We were redeemed. Our ransom was paid totally in full. But we are still left in the world, brethren. Mahali ambapo tulifunguliwa, mahali ambapo kitovu chetu kimeunganishwa, hapo hapo ndipo tulia. Hapo hapo ndipo tuliachwa. Hallelujah. Tunahitaji ku behave na wewe kwamba kitovu chetu akitakuwa cha kuvuta maji kuwa ama chakula na vitu vingine kutoka kule tulikuwa katika ulimwengu ule ambao tumekombolewa. Eh? Hallelujah. Ulimwengu kila kitu imelipwa. Kwa yule ambaye alitufunga amepewa ransom. Lakini hata wakati alipewa ransom na akajua umefunguliwa bando anakufuatanga. Hallelujah. Bando anakufuata. And you know what gives them the power to funga you? Let me tell you what happened uh, on Friday. In the course of the week. In the course of the week, I think it was uh, on Tuesday. I received a call from whom? From one of my nephews. Uh, I had a cousin and my cousin was uh, was was the age of my father. <coughs> so he was an old man. <coughs> we are named after the same person. <coughs> after one person. And therefore, uh here at Pondoka, the next senior most member of the family ambaye <coughs> ambaye ameachwa ni mimi. Hata kama kunao walio na miaka mingi kuniliko uh, in the family line. I am the most senior. And so mtoto wake amenipigia simu. Akaniambia uh, on Saturday we are go- we are going to have the ceremony of the unveiling of our late father's cross. Ay. And you know because because you are our father you should be there. Because you are our father you should be there. It was supposed to be yesterday. What is to unveil the cross? Eh? Kelilika no. <laughs> you know, kulilika na gekukia mudu wakile. In other words, it is, unajua aninini muna kiita hivyo. Lakini in the spiritual world, it is not that way. It is actually paying homage, paying honor respect to the spirit of the departed bana apewe sifa sasa nikamuuliza huyu mtu nikamwambia nika you know i grew up in the in the pca in the presbyterian background and all the years i stayed there i never heard about about these ceremonies nikamuuliza what are you talking about this is pca yeah my my cousin was a senior elder of the church what what are you talking about uh, with the unveiling of the cross. Iyo ni nini sasa? Kaniambia no. Uh, it is done. Nikamwambia okay. It is okay it is done. But it is not done by me. Bana sifiwe. As far as I'm concerned. That cannot take place. And if it is taking place. You guys go ahead and do whatever you want. Lakini mimi sifanyi nini? Siwezi kuja. I cannot take part in that ceremony. You know. Uh, it was very interesting. On that night, nikiwa nalala, nikaota ndoto. Nikaona roho imeunuka kutoka kaburini eh, ya yule mzee, yule kazini yangu ambaye alikufa ikiwa na hasira nyingi sana kwa maana nimekataa kuipatia heshima. Bwana apewe sifa. Imeinuka ikiwa na ukali mwingi sana. <clears throat> Inakuja itusambulie inakuja ituangamize inakuja ianze kutuaribu kwa maana nimekataa mimi kuwapatia nini so mimi na kizazi changu tunastahili tuangami tuangamizwe that is the way things are in the spiritual realm my brother my sister don't take things for granted bwana apewe sifa don't take things for granted the life you live is 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 influenced by the powers of our ancestors that died long time ago it is influenced in some way you may be you may be living without anything because of the influence of those spirits sir. 
You may be having no husband, not because God intended you to have no husband, but because there is an influence from some ancestor there. And by an asema who you always kuolewa. A while ago, I think two years ago, I was, I was, a lady came to me. I was doing some deliverance. And this girl told me, look here, pastor. I am over 30 years old. Uh, I, I think she was at five. And I can remember since I was 28, I, every year I'm always in a relationship. But how the relationship comes to an end, I cannot tell. So I am unmarried. She talked to me. And uh, I wondered. So as I was asking her some questions, uh, she told me something. She told me, I, I was trying to dig out to know whether there are some things she knows about, about her family. Lakini jambo moja aliniambia, akaniambia baba yangu, kabla ya sisi tuzariwe, walienda kulashiria mmoja, one of their relatives, wakaenda kulashia. Walipoenda kulashia, yule ambaye wale in-laws walikuwa wanandimandi kupatiwa pombe. Wapatiwa nini? <coughs> Na ya hui alikuwa ataki kusikia mambo ya pombe. Akakashirika sana. Akasema kama pombe ni lazima wakati wa kulashio, ikiwa ni lazima pombe itolewe ndiyo msichana aolewa ama ifanyike, uh, wasichana wangu wasiolewe. Mwana apewe sita. None of the girls in that family got married. Why? Because of the words spoken by them. Yani, the spirit had the word. They took the word. And they made sure these words work in the family. Yeah? When I... Wakati ni mwambia wacha tuombe. Hata si kusimama mahali ni likuwa ni meketi. I didn't feel led to, uh, to stand. Lakini wakati nilimwambia tu wacha tuombe nikainua tu mkono hata bila bila kufunga macho niliona amebandilika akawa mnyama. Akaanza kunguruma kwa ofisi kama Simba. In fact I was almost running out. She was very fierce. Meno imegeuka imekuwa mnyama. <coughs> eh, aliguruma kwa sauti kubwa sana. Na akasema huyu ni wangu. Uyu ni wangu na hawezi kuchukuliwa kutoka kwangu. But God is good. I gathered courage. Siku kimbia. I gathered courage. Tukapigana na mnyama. Na mnyama akashindwa. <coughs> Sorry. Mnyama akashindwa. Mschana akafunguliwa. Hallelujah. Let me tell you. In fact, a few months back, I niambia sasa, he has a boyfriend. Let me tell you, friends, don't take for granted the things that are happening in your life, the kind of life that you are living. You should know there are some powers behind whatever is happening in your life. Hallelujah. There are some forces, and those forces are influencing whatever happens in your life. Those forces are influencing. Mwai, maana kuna maari zimetoka, kuna mizizi ambayi na kukonekti kule. And therefore they keep on claiming. They lay a claim upon your life. They lay a claim upon your wealth. They lay a claim upon your children. Hallelujah. It is until the, uh, Jacob, uh, Isaac, Isaac Ariambia Esau, you are, you are going to serve your brother. And when you are tired of serving your brother, you shall break the yoke with your own sword. Hallelujah. <clears throat> is until you are tired of the situation that you are living in. It is until you are tired of being oppressed and tormented. It is until you are tired of being uh, unafanya kazi, pesa inachukuliwa inaenda. Hallelujah. Najua watu wanapatanga pesa. Inakujia kwa mkono hui, inatokea hui. Unaona ni, ma, ni mambo ilikuwa mi? Mingi. Lakini wacha ni kulize swali. Kwa nini mambo inakuanga mingi wakati umepata pesa? Kwa nini hakuna mtu mgonjwa wakati ya pata pesa? Lakini ukipata pesa leo, ukifika nyumbani utakuta mtoto aligonjeka na amegonjeka sana mpaka apeleke hospitali. Eh? Bona, bona, hiyo shida haiko wakati hakuna pesa. Wakati umepata pesa, ndio wakati ngari yako ina knock engine. Kwa nini? Ukiwa una pesa, you are comfortable. Eh? When you are struggling, you are comfortable. Kwa maana, kuna mapepo ya nasema, kwenu wakuja patikana mtu tajiri. Hallelujah. Kuna mapepo ya nasema, kwenu wakuja patikana hata baba yako wa kujenga nyumba. We unataa kujenga nyumba kama nani. So wakati unafikiria utanunua mawe, jambo linakuja, inachukua pesa. Unaachwa siku ya wani. 
Let me tell you what happened as I close. One time. I have so many stories, of course, to give. Kuishi kwingi ni kuona mengi. And the injury without experience is no range. Wana apewe sifa. Let me tell you what happened some years back, over, over 15 years ago. I was in Laikipia. And where we were, there was a, a, a good shamba with a river frontage. So ni kawaza, kwa nini ni silime mahali hapa, ni pande nyanya. But then the problem was, I didn't have any money. So ni kawaza what to do. Ni, ka, ni kawaza, in Nairobi I've got good friends. Ni na watu wengi in Nairobi, ni na marafiki wengi wazuri. Ambao ni kienda ni waeleze the project I want to undertake. They will have no problem. And so, ni litafuta to fair. Ni kakuja Nairobi. Nikaenda kwa one of my friends. Nikaenda kwa one of my friends. By then he was working. Uh, though later on he became a, a pastor. Yeah? So nikaenda kwa huyo pastor. Anaitua pastor Karau. Nikaenda nikamweleza. Uh, our senior pastor knows him well. Nikaenda nikamweleza. Ah, kaniambia. That's a good idea. I'm going to support you. He gave me 3,000 shillings. 3,000 was a lot of money. I was very happy. Nikapanda gari nikarudi la ikipia. And then, I, 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 it was on a Wednesday when I arrived there. On, uh, on, uh, on Friday, nikamua sasa kuenda kukiria ile bushi likuwa pale. Nianze kutayarisha shamba. Because I have the money. Nikaenda pale, nika, nikifia kapale, uh, after some time, nikasikia watoto wangu wakiria. Nikashindu watoto wanaria kwa nina, ninasikia kama wanaria wote. Uh, walikuwa tu anacheza huko kwa shamba. But, mbali kidogo. Uh, nikasikia <coughs> Gloria kinita na niambia Dadi, pita hameingia mchanga kwa jicho ah, Mchanga tu ah, Hiyo ni kitu kidogo mtoe Hiyo ni kitu kidogo mtoe eh? Lakini after a while nikasikia bandu wanaendelea kuria na wanaria kwa shauti sasa Hata wanakuja Nikasimama ni, nisikie ni nini Nikamuliza mbona uja mtoa Haka niambia Aitoki so ni kamua, saa hata ni, ni meingia asira. Maana naona wana ni ipotezea masaa. Eh? Wana ni ipotezea masaa. I, I, I want to clear this place. I want to do my work very fast. Nika, nika clear. Nika, nika panda. Wakati nilienda pale, what I saw was very, I, I, I don't know how to describe it. It was intriguing. Yani, ilikuwa ni kama eh, jicho lili funguliwa hivi mwingine akachukua mchanga akiweka. Maana uoni jicho, you cannot see the conea, you cannot see anything. Ni mchanga tu, unaona matope pale. Ay, nikauliza what happened. Nikaambiwa mmoja, alik, mdogo, alikuwa anatupia yule mwingine eh, wakicheza. Sasa vile ilitupwa, iligonga uyu hapa. Sasa ikigonga hapa, how came it iliingia kwa jicho? Kwa hiyo njia, kama haikuwe kwa iliingia na mnagani. Eh? Niliangaria, nikashindwa, what to do? Nikaacha kazi yangu tukaenda nyumbani. Ni, nikafikiria nao. Maana nimejaribu kufa, kupangusha na kitambaa. Haiwezi. Hata nikijaribu na mnagana haiweze kani. So I had a syringe. Nika warm some water. Nika weka uh, some uh, little salt. Nika na weka kwa syringe na ipiga. Eh, atanango. Iyo ndiyo ilikiria ilile jicho. Sasa, after kukiria, nika, nili, ili, it was on a Friday. And Fridays we used to have a fellowship. Na tunikua tunaenda mbali Nikaambia kijana tuende So that as I go for the fellowship Utaonekana pale kwa clinic There was a clinic there When we arrived at the clinic Kutuangaria tu nasi akasema Unajua kama ni hiyo jicho unata tuangarie Sisi ya tuja luishiwa kuona jicho Upande gari maramoja Uende na nyuki Huko ni kondaktari ya napatikana It was 3.30 Nika Anza kuwaza, how am I going to do that? Anyway, na nilazima tuende. Nikapetia kanisani, kawambia endelea na ushirika, napeleka mtoto hospital. By the time we arrived at the stage, it was five something. Tukapanda matatu. Kufika na nyuke, uh, tukangojea. Tuliona daktari uh, after six that day. Daktari, a physician. Tulipoingia, nikamweleza, akasema sikia mzee. Hivi ndivi ya utafanya. Mala moja, huyu mtoto umkimbize nyeri. And let me tell you, I didn't have any other money. <coughs> ile pesa ilikuweko ni ile elufuta. 
na saa ile nimeambiwa nikimbia nyeri ilikuwa saa moja ya usiku <coughs> tukaenda stage na akaniambia ili jicho lisilale mpaka ufike na nyeri leo it was very it was annoying tukapanda gari tena tulifika nyeri saa tatu ya usiku tukaenda hospitali tulipanga laini mpaka saa sita ya usiku ndio tulionekana yule ambaye alituona was a general physician kama yule ambaye alikataa kutushughulikia nyeri aka aka tukaingia kwake akaniuliza hili jicho ulifanya nini kamweleza a b c d akaniambia that is exactly what should have been done but uh, nitakuandikia some some drugs nikaandikiwa madawa sasa pharmacy imefungwa si mpaka tulale tukalala kule asubuhi tukaenda pharmacy tukapata aina moja ya dawa tukaambiwa hizo nyingine muende chemist by the time i finished that my 3000 was left 700 shillings shida imekwisha shida ile ilifanya pesa ipatikane ime haijafanyika lakini jicho shida nayo imekwi pesa ikiisha shida inaisha friends we should not be ignorant of the devices of the devil the battles that we fight are not carnal we don't wage war against flesh and blood and blood read in your in your bible Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 We don't wrestle. We don't wage war after the patterns of this world. We don't fight with things that can be seen, but with the principalities, with the rulers, with the powers in the spiritual realms. Second Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 3. Brethren, ni lazima tuelewe yale mambo yanatendeka they are influenced by some spiritual powers, either demonic powers or godly powers. Bwana apewe sifa. It is very good to discern and to understand what is happening in your life. Maana pasipo kufanya hivyo utaishi ukistrago na kila wakati ukipata nyanya zile nilizipanda. Lakini wakati zilianza kuiba, wakati umeona moja imeiba pale ingine pale ingine pale, nikawa na mambo itanileta na robi na nitakaa sasa na robi. Nikaambia mama sikia. Nikaambia ako pale utamuuliza ukitaka. Nikamwambia sasa lazima niende wapi Nairobi na sababu nyanya zimekomaa ni kuiva tu eh, what I do nitalipa kijana kulikuwa na kijana wa jirani pale atakuwa anakuja anakupigia ndawa wewe zikiiba wewe kazi yako ni kuchuna na, na sababu wa, wenye kununua wanakujanga kwa shamba i expected that i'm going to sell that uh, those, that crop for that thousand so mimi nimeacha na nikakuja Eh, vile zimeanza kuiva iva yes aingine ata ata atachuna ata, atauza ya 500 atauza and hata zaingine ananitumia some uh, little money eh? so one night nikaota one night nikaota nikaona kwa ile shamba yangu moto ulikuja usiku ulipitia wapi kwa nyanya zangu na zote zimeungua hakuna moja imebaki hey Nilisikia kama mkuki umenichoma. The work I did. The struggle I had. And now moto umechoma. Hey. Let me tell you. I had to take a matatu mara moja. Niende nikaone ni nini inatendeka. Because I know I never dream dreams ambazo ni za ndizi za abunuasi. So I took the matatu and went home. Nilipofika nyumbani Atua ya kwanza bila hata kuangalia nini kuuliza anything ni kwenda kwa shamba nilikuta usiku huo mbaha ilikuja nini najua wale hawajalima hawajui mbaha ni nini mbaha imekuja imechoma nyanya zote zimekatika katika katika hiyo shamba ilikuwa inanuka kama ile machisha inatokanga kwa ndelo monte inapelekewa ngombe nothing is left Nothing. I had nothing to sell. The maximum that was sold from the shamba, uh, the shamba I expected that thousand was 3000 shillings. Kama ile nilipe? Mm. Bwana awabariki. Anso ukitaka kuangalia unaenda kwa baba yako. Sasa baba yako alikuwa maskini wewe unataka kutajirika uwe kama nani? Hiyo pepo inakuja inauliza hiyo swali. 
Baba yako alikuwa ana nyumba, wewe unataka kujenga kama nani? Eh? Baba yako alikuwa, wewe unataka unarudi kwa babu yako, unarudi kwa babu ya babu, unarudi kwa yule mwingine, unaona shida zinatoka wa? <laughs> unaona shida zinatoka wapi? And then you must decide what action you are going to take. Bwana apewe sifa. If you want to live a victorious life, if we want to overcome those powers and principalities, the only way we can do it is by living Romans 12 verse 1 and 2. Whenever you do anything that will connect you with your traditions, whenever you do something that will connect you with the things of your ancestors, you must know you have opened a door and that door that demonic powers are going to come in. Bwana apewe sifa. They are going to oppress you, they are going to torment you. They are going to do everything to you. If you want to be victorious, you must renew your mind through the power of the word of God. That is the only way you can be victorious. Baba wa mbinguni katika jina la Yesu. Ninarinua jina lako ninalibariki bwana wa ajabu kwa wema wako na fadhili zako Jehovah God. Ni asante kwa sababu ya hilo neno bwana wa ajabu. My God, I want to believe Abba Father that your word king of glory Jehovah God has brought light into the life of somebody. I want to believe Jehovah God it has brought some understanding my God and knowledge my God in life of someone of king of glory. I want to believe Jehovah God you spoken to somebody Jehovah God and you continue to enlighten the eyes of somebody's understanding of our father. The Lord Jehovah God your power may work through us so my God. You may continue my God to manifest your glory through us our father. My Lord and my God the mighty name of Jesus. Maana bwana Mungu ajabu neno lako lina nguvu ya kutufungua bwana wa neno lako linaweza aba father neno lako bwana Mungu wa milele linaweka huru linaweza kututenganisha bwana kukata kila kitovu bwana Mungu wa milele tukawa huru tukawa watu wa kuishi maisha bwana ambaye atuunganishi bwana Mungu wa milele na kule tulitoka bwana wa jaa hazana atuunganishi bwana na tabia bwana wa jaa na maneno bwana wa milele zile ambazo zilikuwa zinatawara babu zetu zile zilikuwa zinatawara bwana Mungu wa jaa watu wa mbali zetu na mirega yetu bwana wa jaa my god jaa wa God, how it is time I got to be separated from them. My God, that your name may be glorified, Jehovah God. Father God, we bless your name and worship you. And the blessed oh my God to continue, my God, with the study. My God, Jehovah God, that we may search, Jehovah God, that we out of it, O King of glory, Jehovah God, and that your name, my God, may be glorified. Have your way, our Father, Jehovah God, in the lives of your people, Jehovah God, that Lord, somebody will be courageous enough to take the right action, oh my God, that Lord, Jehovah God, that my God, Jehovah God, the court may be broken our father and separated the fallen from the ways oh my God of our ancestors oh my God we bless your name my God and we worship you because you are grace the Lord and you are faithful in the mighty name of Jesus sir. oh my God we thank you and we bless you my God because you are faithful my God may you bless your people May you, Jehovah God, enlighten the eyes of the understanding. May you give them knowledge of our Father. May you order their steps, O King of glory. May you protect them, my God, even when we are together. May you, Jehovah God, watch over their lives sir, and deliver every one of us, O my God, from this plague, O my God, that is going around the nation, that is going around the world of our Father. Deliver your people, even from many form of deception, from every lie, O my God. Deliver us, O King of glory. Because, Lord, we trust in you, our Father. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We pray. God bless you. We continue next Sunday. Marvelous grace of our Lord.